Right now, you're either thinking one of two things. The first being, wow, Thermal Take, your recent video where you broke down the naming conventions surrounding graphics cards was super insightful and the added transparency helped inform me of my following GPU purchase. Or you're thinking, I didn't see that video and deservedly, now my brain is small. So in an act of goodwill from your very best friends here at Thermal Take Australia, we're going to do the exact same thing, but this time, with motherboards, detailing what their names mean and why they're named that way. I mean, MSI, MEG, 6570 Godlike, Asus, ROG, Maximus, Z 690 Hero Wi-Fi, MSI, B450 Gaming Plus Max. None of this means anything. So let's say we translate this all into regular human language. So now you'll know which one to get when it comes time to purchase that motherboard. So here we have this wall behind me and this represents your mind right now. Uh, it's blank. There's nothing going on, but that's okay because we're about to fill it with juicy motherboard knowledge. And we're going to start with the most crucial bit of information that will inform you of what motherboard you should get. The motherboard's physical size. While we will get into the nerdy tech stuff in a second, no one wants to be the guy who orders a motherboard for his PC only to find it doesn't actually fit in the case. Like, I, I cannot believe I live in the same society and have the same power come next election as the guy that has done this. So all you need to know is that motherboards come in a few different form factors, AKA sizes. The most common being ATX, which is a larger motherboard type designed for full tower and bigger mid tower cases. But there's also EATX, the biggest motherboard type for full tower cases only. Is this the one I have? Yes. Am I compensating for something? Absolutely. Now there's also micro ATX or MATX designed for smaller mid towers and micro cases. And there's even mini ITX cases, which is even smaller than that. So I have it represented here, kind of like biggest to smallest descending on a downward slope. Um, unlike me after high school, um, like really, Mr. Simmons most likely to eat corn the long way? But, well, well, look at me now. Now with this all out of the way, let's talk about compatibility. See, every single motherboard on the market right now, regardless of size, is designed to support one of two potential CPUs. An AMD CPU or an Intel CPU. So regardless of whether the motherboard is MSI branded or ASUS branded or whatever, they will always support either AMD or Intel. To borrow the analogy from the GPU video, the motherboard market is like a bunch of companies making their own flavors of chips, but all of them source their potatoes from the same two farms. So now the question becomes, which farm do we go with? Well, if we were buying the motherboard first, the factor that informs you of which brand you'll be going with is the motherboards socket type. So the socket is the little square on the motherboard where you place the CPU. And of course, Intel sockets and AMD CPUs are not compatible and vice versa. Like they're enemies, there's mad beef there. Um, we don't want to get into it. But lucky for us, these sockets are always named so we can differentiate between the two types. The socket will either be labeled LGA with a bunch of numbers after it to indicate it's an Intel compatible socket or AM followed by a single number to represent it's an AMD compatible socket. So anytime you're considering buying a motherboard, take a second to look in the item's description or on the side of the box, and it will inform you of the socket type and therefore what brand CPU you'll need. However, it's these numbers at the end of the socket type that will then tell you what generation the CPU is compatible with. As CPUs are released into the market in generations, and thus motherboards designed to support them will follow suit. Now you can't be buying the latest CPU and pop it into a motherboard from 15 years ago and expect it to work fine. Like me in fifth grade physical education, uh, it won't be able to keep up. I don't know how many times I have to tell you, Mr. Woods, but I don't have the same aerobic capacity as Philip, probably because I have too many sunny boys at lunchtime. Was it really called Glug Cola? That's disgusting. The most recent generation of Intel CPU is the 12th gen, which is in the midst of releasing. And the handy part about Intel CPUs is that their names will instantly indicate what generation they belong to. So an i9-10900K will immediately tell us that it's from the 10th generation of Intel CPUs. So if we want it, we'll need a motherboard with an LGA1200 socket, as that type is the one that supports it. And the most recent generation of AMD CPU is AM4. Pretty much anything from the last five years is an AM4 socket. 
So if you wanted, say, a Ryzen 7 3700 CPU, you need an AM4. When it comes to confirming compatibility type between CPU and socket type, Google is our friend here. Popping your desired motherboard into somewhere like PCPartPicker.com will inform you of what CPUs are compatible with it. All right, so now we know how to differentiate between the two types of motherboards. But the annoying thing for us is that the motherboard's marketing considers the socket type to be an afterthought. It is far more interested in telling us about the big number here. I mean, what is a B550? And why does it mean my gaming is now in addition? Well, this number indicates the motherboard's chipset, which basically tells you the model of the motherboard, aka what kinds of bells and whistles it has. For example, regardless of brand and aesthetics, a motherboard with a Z590 chipset indicates that it is guaranteed to have integrated Wi-Fi, six SATA ports, and overclocking support, amongst a bunch of other features. So let's say we take another look at our MSI B450 Gaming Plus Max that I mentioned earlier. If we take a second to confirm that it supports an AM4 socket type, we can infer just as much information from its big scary name as, say, an iPhone 13 Pro Max. Let's break it down. So on this side, we have the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And on this side, we have the MSI B450 Gaming Plus Max. So first, the title indicates the brand of the technology. On this side, we have iPhone, which of course we know is made by Apple. And on this side, we have MSI, which we know the motherboard either supports AMD or Intel. Next, the title indicates the generation of the text. So here on the iPhone side, we have the 13th generation of iPhone. And on this side, we can confirm that it is an AM4 socket type. So we can know for sure that it's an AMD supported motherboard. Next, the title indicates the model of the technology. So on the iPhone side, we have the Pro, which indicates that it's a slightly better model than the base version. And on this side, we can see that it's a B450 chipset. And finally, we can indicate the size of the text. And on the iPhone side, we have the Max. So it's physically the biggest iPhone size. And on this side, we have, it's also titled the Max conveniently, which we can assume means it's a bigger motherboard, which we can confirm by seeing on the box that it is an ATX. Now, because the advertising of iPhones is deliberately more simple and transparent for your everyday consumer, it's easy to understand what features a Pro possesses over a base model of iPhone 13, for example. Unfortunately, with motherboards, you have to dig a little deeper to understand what bells and whistles a B450 Max has say over an A520. This is where we once again visit our friend Google, as memorizing all the models of motherboards and how they differ just comes with time, because there are so many variations. For AM4 sockets alone, there are like eight different models. It's bananas. However, equipped with only the knowledge of the motherboard's form factor, socket type, and chipset model, we now have more than enough information to inform our purchase. As the rest of the motherboard's name is just marketing buzzwords, you know, gaming plus, it's just a language to coax in super rad gamer boys. Uh, and I'm not hating, I, I'm in that category. I love playing Battlefield, uh, getting quick scopes on Blood Gulch. Uh, <laughs> anyway. That's basically it. Hopefully the names of motherboards are a little easier to understand now. There's obviously heaps of stuff I left out of this video, but now equipped with this knowledge, you should have a little more confidence when buying your first motherboard. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave us a like. And if you think I missed anything obvious, be sure to let us know down in the comments section below. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you uh, love Jesus, be sure to ring that bell to be notified every time we upload. Lastly, if you'd like to check out any more of our videos, you can spot a couple floating here somewhere on the screen. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.